right now on the way to LAX airport. It's been a busy morning trying to clean up my room again, trying to pack. Hopefully, I brought everything home to Indonesia. It's a beautiful sunset right on my left, but there are like clouds. I heard like it's gonna rain tonight at midnight in LA and Irvine. Yeah, I'm super excited to finally come back home. It's been so long been thinking about this in my head for weeks. It's my first time flying Singapore Air since 2019 and I've really missed flying on that plane so it's gonna be really exciting but this is my first time flying on economy class on a very very long flight. Apparently when I searched it up um, this flight is one of the world's longest flights. It's like seventh place. The longest flight is from New York to Singapore which is like one hour and 30 minutes longer. So yeah, I'm gonna see you when I'm in the play. So for this flight, I get to fly on board my favorite aircraft, which is the Airbus A350. It's one of the newest aircraft types that's produced by Airbus and also definitely one of the most comfortable ones. And one of the factors is that the aircraft is quieter as compared to other aircrafts when it's on the sky. I booked the aisle seat as I think it is more spacious as compared to the window and middle seat. Overall, I really like the colors of the economy class seats because they make them look really sleek and the seat itself is very very comfortable. So the seat comes with an in-flight entertainment touchscreen which looks really modern and there's also a cup holder plus a small storage space under the in-flight entertainment screen which maybe is for phone and there was just a random string in there, it's kind of strange. Moving on to the left, there is a USB plug and the earphone plug for the in-flight entertainment. Something I really liked about SQ economy class seats is that they have multiple seat pockets so you can organize your things such as your passport and your phone properly. I was surprised that there was no footrest attached to the seat because it's a long flight so they are necessary. Before takeoff, I managed to get a small peek of the window outside, so I just zoom in my phone and try to film the takeoff. the cabin was dark or else I would have pissed the passenger off.
Now it's time to endure this grueling 16 hour red eye flight. Let's see how things go. First off, I was scrolling through the movies in Infight Entertainment and instead of watching a movie that's globally popular, I decided to watch a Singaporean national service movie called A Boys to Men. Well actually there are 4 of them, with each movie lasting 1.5 to 2 hours. So I guess that's a good thing for me to kill time. There's also Wi-Fi available on the flight for purchase, but if you're a Chris Flyer member, you're in luck because it's complimentary. So around two hours into the flight, I had dinner and I opted for the beef steak plus mashed potatoes and some veggies. Overall, the taste wasn't too good but wasn't too bad, it's just like a typical economy class meal. And after that I had some haagen vanilla ice cream which was really frozen so I needed to wait for a few minutes to eat it. After dinner I thought it's good for me to try to sleep but Unfortunately, it was really tough because um, there was a lot of turbulence and I just struggled to sleep in airplanes a lot. After 3 hours of sleeping and 3 hours of just sitting there struggling to sleep, the cabin light is finally on as the cabin crew is about to serve breakfast. So for breakfast, I opted for a typical western meal which includes eggs, mushrooms, bacon, beans, and sausages. And again, the taste is still typical but you know, it's economy class so what can you expect? arrived at my ground 20 minutes ago. Thankfully I managed to find um, the gate for my connecting flight to Karda easily because I've been to Changi Airport many times even though I, the last time I went here was a few months ago but I didn't went to Terminal 2 so Terminal 2 is a bit unfamiliar to me. Uh, yeah, kind of hungry right now. Hopefully I could find food somewhere. It's still 5am so I think the restaurant is still close over here. And the flight overall was it was nice. I managed to get like four hours of sleep. It was like two hours, then one hour, then one hour. So for my next flight, uh, my seat's actually a premium economy seat, but uh, that that seat sold as an economy seat with an extra charge of 14 US dollars. It's kind of worth it. I mean, because there's like some difference between economy and premium economy. So also want to try a different kind of seat on Singapore Airlines 
because if I just find an economy, it's going to be the same exact seat as the one I flew from LA to Singapore. So yeah, just can't wait to try the premium economy seat, even though it's only one hour. Hey yo, I don't have a gym in this airport. That's crazy. Just gonna head up to the restaurants. Compared to economy, premium economy edges out when it comes to the amount of storage space, the amount of legroom, and also the privacy of the cabin as premium economy cabins are smaller. There are two seat pockets on this seat, and on the back one, you get to store your laptop. If you fly on Singapore Airlines Economy Class, you will get an in-flight entertainment earphone that you can take home. They are usually provided in the gates before you enter the aircraft. There is a plug beside the seat to connect the earphones to the in-flight entertainment. that is used on the seat as it is smooth and comfortable. It really helped in relieving some of the soreness that I had from the previous flight from LA to Singapore. Laugh innocently, but it didn't feel... 
For breakfast, I opted for the nasi lemak, which means rich rice. So it's a Malaysian traditional dish, and the taste was really, really good actually. It's definitely way better than the two meals that I had on the previous flight. As we approached to Jakarta, I was really amazed on how clean the air was as this is extremely rare. So when I checked the air quality index on my phone at that time, the level was 20, which is way below the average that Jakarta has, which is 150. I think one reason that can explain this is because it is rainy season in Jakarta in December, so I guess the rain cleared up the pollution on the sky. Saturday night